Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Roger Gilbert. I'm the publisher of Perindale Publishers here uh, for Milling and Grain magazine. And this afternoon, or for me, we're in the Rongo Rongo Live video studios. It's a great pleasure for me today to be welcoming a guest from the African Union. And the, he is part of NEPAD. That is the New Partnership for African Development. And Dr. Hamadi Diop is the head of the Technical Cooperation and Advisory Department for the African Union's Development Agency. So NEPAD is the all important word. It's New Partnership for African Development. And before I introduce him and uh, welcome him to the platform, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about his background. He has previously served as the head of the Natural Resources, Resource Governance, Food Security and Nutritional Program for uh, NEPAD in South Africa. Uh, he is familiar with uh, us in Europe and also in America, where he uh, was uh, at the Louisiana State University, of, uh, where he had attained his doctorate. Uh, he has a PhD in Agricultural Economics and he is also a Master of Science in Economics and Agricultural Economics from the same university. Dr. Diop has been a recipient of many grants and his research has been published widely in many scientific journals. He has also been a guest speaker on many international conferences and he is a recipient of a one-year training in coaching, mentoring and leadership scholarship. Uh, Dr. Hamadi, uh, welcome uh, to the welcome to the platform today to the video the Rongo Rongo video live studio. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Roger, for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure always to to see you again and uh, to to be a guest in uh, in your show. Uh, I think the last time we met uh, it was uh, about a couple of years ago, yes. but we have been uh, interacting. Uh, uh not very regularly but we have been uh interacting on and off uh and i have been uh, reading the your magazine and i have been accessing to your magazine quite uh, quite some time yeah uh, thank you for having me thank you uh our magazine milling and grain of course is translated into french and also into arabic so we do recognize that the african continent as a whole is uh, very important to the development of milling uh, and uh, not only in food production, but also, which we'll talk about today, in animal production. Uh, okay. you, and, and that is uh, the essence of what we want to discuss today, I guess, is how does NEPAD see uh, animal production as meeting the uh, food demands or food security requirements of the African Union? Uh, no, th thank you, Roger, for, uh, for this excellent question. Uh, you know, um, the African Union uh, has been supporting member states to to improve on their planning system in the area of agriculture, uh, to improve their productivity, to meet their target in terms of food security and nutrition, uh, to link a smallholder farmers to to market, uh, and then to make uh, them resilient to uh, different threats. Uh, be they uh, those threats could be market led the threat like a price. Uh, sharks, they could be environment led, uh, like natural natural uh, flooding or, uh, uh, or or recently what we have in Africa with the infestation of uh, locust oh. uh, in east and east uh, and southern Africa or drought related. So you have different shocks that can uh, impact our food systems, uh, and then the African Union has been leading really to the what we call the CADEP program, which is a comprehensive African agriculture uh, development program. Uh, to support member state uh, to uh, to implement uh, that continental framework. Uh, up to up to year 2000, we have uh, almost a balanced uh, uh, a balanced uh, food production uh, where we were almost producing all that we needed in the continent. But since uh, the year 2000s uh, um, crisis of food uh, of food systems. Uh, we have been increasing uh, our dependence on import, and as of recently, we have been uh, spending uh, about $50 billion a year on food import. Uh, so we are very, very dependent 
uh, on uh, on foreign food production uh, and this has to be uh, reversed it has to change and for that to change we have to really uh, mobilize resources uh, and support our our local food production mm -hmm. uh, so uh, but uh, as of recently uh, you know with the with the covid uh, most likely uh, we, we we may have experienced like a lot of uh, disruption uh, i'm sure uh, the impact of COVID on on our food system is not fully known yet, yes. but uh, it's something that we need to to focus on and see how we can uh, we can uh, have like a, a clearer picture and see how we can uh, we can uh, reverse it. Mm. Well, I mean, it's uh, food production is all about domestic uh, rearing domesticated animals and feeding them properly, I guess. I mean, are commercial companies playing a role in that process of helping to develop uh, food production from livestock in Africa? Is that is that what NEPAD is uh, promoting or, or encouraging? Well, what, what NEPAD does is, uh, is to promote uh, private sector investment into, mm. into agriculture. Uh, during the first decade of uh, the implementation of CADEP, uh, there were like a provision uh, and a target uh, set by our head of state to allocate about 10% of uh, their domestic uh, public expenditure uh, into, uh, into supporting uh, agricultural production and productivity. Um, but we know agriculture is a, should be private sector led. Uh, so in uh, the second phase of uh, the CADEP program, there was a big emphasis on how to bring private sector investment into agriculture mm. uh, and the private sector uh, investment uh, has not reached the level yet to to lead the transformation but nepa to different uh, programs uh, including the one that you are familiar with which is grow africa has been uh, creating the platform uh, to bring private sector investment into agriculture um so so we 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 moving slowly uh but uh, something that is uh, sure uh, is that uh, the CADE program has been very very widely uh, adopted and endorsed by member state we have more than 40 uh seven countries more than 45 countries that have uh, uh, endorsed uh, the CADE uh, philosophy and process and uh, through that process uh, the AUDA NEPAD has supported those countries to develop uh, national strategies, mm. uh, associated investment plan, uh, hold basically stakeholders engagement, uh, including private sector, uh, and mobilize uh, resources to support uh, the implementation of, of the kind of program. And, and how important do you see uh, compounded livestock feeds being in the whole production chain? Is compounded feeds a focus of NEPAD in its new developments or technology developments? Uh, you, you know, one of the challenges we have uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Africa is like the issue of post-harvest uh, loss. So we have a very, very large uh, part of our production that is wasted because we don't have the, the right technology to to bring the production to market so uh, the milling uh, and the storage uh, are very important uh, in terms of supporting the process in uh, in addressing the post harvest issues uh, about 35 to 40 percent of what is produced in, in the continent uh, doesn't reach the market uh, due to many factors uh, sometimes it's a, it's a price issue uh, when the production reaches the market, the prices are not right. Mm. Uh, the second is a market glut. Uh, mm. When it comes to the market, you have too much of that produced in, in the market. Uh, the third one is an issue of uh, transportation. Uh, just to move the product the product from the, uh, the, the, the place where it is produced uh, to the market, there are a lot of challenges. Uh, mm. And then uh, on the top of that, the technology is not there to, to, to do the story the storage. Yeah. Uh, so one of the target of, uh, of, uh, of CADEP uh, is to basically half uh, uh, post-harvest loss by 2025. 
by year 2025. So there were a lot of opportunities for private companies uh, to come in uh, and then uh, either work on the feed side to to support the increase of production in term of, in the area of livestock, for example, or in term of uh, aquaculture, uh, or uh, to support also the process when production is done, how to uh, to store it and yeah. how to bring it to market. Mm. So, how would a company go about uh, getting involved in, say, storage? How what what would its first steps be if it wanted to take some storage technology to Africa? Uh, I, I think most uh, most of those uh, uh, m most of uh, those steps have to be done uh, through uh, country engagement, direct okay. country engagement. Yeah. Uh, but uh, usually, uh, what Nepal does uh, is that when uh, we are called by a country to support the country in terms of uh, uh, either revising the national agriculture investment plan or helping the country to set up uh, its uh, uh, to develop a new investment uh, agriculture investment plan or even a regional investment plan we try to bring all the stakeholders uh, around the table and help them to 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 to, un to engage each other on on where they need to to be supporting basically the process uh, so if uh, a company uh, is known by nipad uh, either through our private sector engagement unit or through uh, through our Grow Africa unit, uh, that company uh, is likely to be uh, uh, invited to to participate in, okay. into that process okay. uh, when uh, we are asked to come into a country uh, and to support the strengthening or the development of a new agriculture investment plan. Okay, so, so that's that's the way I can see it. Yeah, no, that's pretty straightforward, and uh, it sounds to me as though. Um, you know, companies are welcome to uh, move in, well, consider Africa as new markets. And uh, storage is particular focus of our magazine. We have a big section on storage now, storage technology and information in our magazine. So we'd be more than happy to uh, act as an in-between. And, and if companies or countries uh, in Africa want to write about their experiences, uh, we would be more than happy to publish those uh, once again in our magazine just to show others that it is possible to um, obviously develop a, a profitable business uh, on the African continent and um, obviously that's that's what we are you know our industry is very commercialized and uh, the technology is in the hands of those commercial companies so um, you know they, they would be more than happy to help I'm sure um, and, and and also on our end also we'll be happy to link uh, some of those with uh, uh, some of our staff who are working on on those areas we have like a different program at nepad uh, and then we have also different uh, colleagues at nepad who are working on certain issues of private sector engagement we have some working on uh, uh, on creating hundred thousand uh, small and medium enterprises in the continent and uh, through those discussions they have a lot of uh, uh, discussion with the private sector engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we will, I will be also happy to to, to link uh, some of your uh, colleagues yes. uh, with my colleagues internally at NEPAD. Um, well, we'll run your interview uh, obviously on our website, but I'll also place on there how to connect with you. Uh, we'll also run a report in our magazine, Milling and Grain. And okay. uh, we'll make mention in a very important document that we publish once a year, which is coming up, is our International Milling Directory, uh, which has a, a whole list of uh, supplier companies, uh, certainly in, in, in both the feed manufacturing, uh, raw material supply, of course, uh, but also storage. So I, I think that, okay. that the magazine can, can uh, provide a means of communication um, between uh, the industry and yourselves. But um, uh, just to finish, the final question is, you mentioned uh, COVID-19 earlier on. Uh, you know, are, are there any specifics? Are, are, are you, um, do you think there's going to be a food security issue? Or do you think that now that COVID is more understandable and we, we recognize how to maybe minimize the, the serious impact it might have, that things are more under control now? Do you? You know, uh last april uh, the african union uh, through the department of rural economy and Agri agriculture 
commission uh, and the FAO uh, convened a meeting uh, with all uh, the minister of uh, agriculture of the continent to uh, discuss uh, the impact of COVID on the agriculture sector. Uh, there were a concern that the health crisis uh, may translate also into a food crisis. Uh, then through that process, uh, a platform was created, uh, and to that platform, uh, we brought uh, together about eight different agencies. Uh, those agencies included the Food and Agriculture uh, uh, Organization of the United Nations, the International Fund for Agriculture Development, which is IFAD, which is also a United Nations program, the, uh, the World Food Program, uh, which is also a UN program, the African Development Bank, mm. the World Bank, the European Commission, uh, the African Union Commission, and the African Union Development Agency, which is NEPAD. So through, uh, through that uh, platform, uh, we created like about four work streams. The first work stream was uh, supposed to do some advocacy, some awareness, uh, at both at the national level and at the continental level on the potential impact of COVID on, uh, on the food systems. The second was uh, to look at uh, how all the uh, interventions uh, uh, related to COVID uh, were basically uh, uh, aligned uh, so that we can have like a, a, a very coherent response to COVID at the continent because you have different agencies intervening yeah. Yeah. but if they don't talk to each other you may have like some yeah. uh, duplications mm -hmm. and uh, but we said like okay how can we mutualize our, our effort so that we can maximize the impact uh, so there were a, a task force that was set up especially to, to look at uh, those issues. The third one was supposed to look at what we call the hotspots, okay. uh, be it uh, locust related, be it COVID related, be it drought related, be it price related, uh, and then try to make some recommendation uh, to the eight agencies on how to move forward. And the last one was looking at the financing. Uh, so each of those committee were led by uh, uh, by some two agencies, uh, and then we have been meeting regularly, uh, and then reporting both to FAO and uh, and African Union Commission on progress, and then also reporting it to to the member state, the country, uh, mostly uh, to the ministers in charge of agriculture uh, and environment. On uh, mm -hmm. and so far, um, the scare that we were uh, looking into has not materialized yet. Okay. Uh, but uh, as I indicated early on, uh, we don't know yet the full picture. Yeah. Uh, it's early to tell that whether uh, the disruption is, is profound or it's just uh, a short leap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we are conscious that uh, impact on the food system uh, is real uh, and that uh, policies, uh, investment, uh, an instrument has to be put in place to be able to help the system to be more resilient uh, to future shocks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, all, all the better. It sounds like you're better prepared, obviously, now than uh, the, at the very early part of last year. But uh, still, the threat appears very real and is there. Yes. And uh, the threat is still there. Yeah. And and. You know, it's the food chain after all that you're talking about and without the food chain functioning properly you know it is a, a desperate situation for a lot of people particularly those who already struggle so um, obviously uh, we wish you all the best of luck and I'm sure people watching this will will think about what they can do to help or to provide some sort of assistance uh, if the worst comes to the worst but uh, we wish you all the best obviously going forward uh, thank you for your time today. Um, I think we have uh, got some good information from you about how Africa is progressing in terms of agricultural development and feed and grain storage uh, and production as well. So, um, yeah, thank you on behalf of everybody for the time today. Thank you. Thank you, Roger, for having me. I'm looking forward to collaborating with you again in the future. Yes. Well, thank you and all the best. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one.